Live, local, late breaking. This is Channel 11 News. News coverage you can count on. A man shot and killed. The suspect takes off on a bicycle tonight. Police are tracking the leads in the death of Leon Mickens. Good evening, everyone. I'm David Johnson. Thanks for joining us for the news here on PCNC. Mickens' family is understandably devastated. They don't know who would want to kill him. He died in the same area where his sister was killed several years ago. Mickens was shot along North Water Street in Masontown, Fayette County, late last night. We just got some brand new information from investigators. Channel 11's Courtney Brennan has that story. I ask God why. Aunts, and, cousins, um, and friends of Leon Mickens gathered at his mother's house this afternoon to comfort her. Leon and his sister died violent deaths here in Masontown, both shot in the head. I think it's a tragedy that my sister-in-law has let, lost two children tragically. Her daughter, 10 years ago, died the same way. Leon Mickens not only died the same way his sister did, but both were shot in this area of Masontown, near Water Street and Spring Avenue. Leon Mickens was shot around 945 last night. Police say the shooter took off on a bicycle. Neighbors heard the shots and tried to save the dying man. Unbelievable. Never seen something like that. You know, I mean, somebody laying there the way he was. It's me being a nurse's aide, I try to help out, you know, and it was just, it was the awfulest thing to ever see, you know, for anybody to experience. It was, it was just awful. Police told Mickens' family the shooter is between 16 and 20. Today, Mickens was supposed to celebrate his 35th birthday. Instead, his family is planning his funeral, and his mother will bury another child. The first thing I thought about, oh no, it's all over again. But one thing I would like to tell the public and the people, that God is with this family. And the family told Courtney they're holding a vigil tonight at the scene of the shooting. A man gets home from work to find his home is on fire. Firefighters got to the scene on Admiral Dewey Avenue in Ingram around 345 this afternoon. Firefighters got that blaze quickly under control. You can see smoke coming out of the home's roof. A neighbor was the first to spot the fire and then called 911. No one was home when the flames broke out. Now to a story we broke on WPXI.com this afternoon. A man questioned the disappearance of his girlfriend, Olivia Kale, several months ago, is arrested again. Alexander Lorenzi is in a different kind of trouble tonight. Olivia Kale is still missing tonight, and police haven't charged him in connection with her disappearance, but he is facing several new charges, one involving a dog. Channel 11's Jodine Costanza tells us about this bizarre twist. Alexander Lorenzi questioned repeatedly in the disappearance of his girlfriend, 19-year-old Olivia Kale of Mount Washington. Although not charged, homicide investigators believe he is not telling all he knows about what happened to her. Kale has not been seen since the two vacationed in Florida in March. However, Lorenzi was held on drug and gun charges, but posted bond and now months later, a shocking twist involving another female friend. Lorenzi is accused of killing the woman's daughter at his Esplan home, the same home where bloodstained sheets were found during the Kale investigation. The dog owner told investigators she left her dog inside his apartment for just a few minutes as she went outside to her car. When she came back, the dog was dead. I talked by phone today with the girl's father. She called hysterically screaming, my dog, my dog, Armani's dead, Armani's dead. A necropsy found the dog died from blunt force trauma to the liver and internal bleeding. The autopsy report reveals that that's kicked or beaten with something, they said. And the violence continued when police went to Lorenzi's home to arrest him for animal cruelty. Police found a bag of suspected cocaine, $6,000 in cash, and according to court records, Lorenzi pushed the officer before he was handcuffed and taken to jail. Jodine also talked with Olivia Kale's mother today about these latest charges. She is glad Lorenzi's back in jail, but had no other comment right now. Our camera is caught up with one of two people accused of raising kids in a house of filth, and police are trying to track down the other one. Kimberly Flynn's case is moving forward to trial. The other suspect, Gilberto Rodriguez, wasn't there, and now an arrest warrant is out for him. We went back to their Manaca home today, where people were trying to clean it up. Police say they found three young kids living in deplorable conditions there last month. They're now in the care of youth services. Tonight we know how a teenage soccer player who collapsed on the field died. We told you about this first yesterday. 15-year-old Sam Dixon died in the soccer field at camp with his friends from school. He went to the Beaver County Christian School and worshipped at Fairview Reform Presbyterian Church in Ohioville. His pastor wanted to talk to us about Sam's message of love and his deep faith. 
and he says he wants he is sad but no Sam is in heaven now he is a remarkable young man and um, a man for whom the world's not worthy just a great kid very responsible very um, dedicated to God at a young age and very mature so it's an honor to talk about him and celebrate his life a little bit we also sat down with some of Dixon's friends today who agree with the priest saying Dixon is in a better place now. Tonight we're getting a look at some new video of a football brawl. The violence broke out after a City League championship game. Channel 11's Tamika Art has found out the new video could be big in the trial expected to start tomorrow. A 38-year-old man is accused of injuring a police officer when a fight broke out here at Couple Stadium nearly two years ago, and it all may come down to surveillance video that shows what happened from beginning to end. You're looking at actual footage from the 2009 Football City Championship, where just after the game was over, a group of spectators rushed the field and started swinging. You can see officers tackle one man to the turf, while several others tried to keep parents and fans away. 38-year-old Torian Cal Holloway will now stand trial for aggravated assault, resisting arrest, and causing a riot for allegedly breaking a school police officer's jaw during the brawl. This video is expected to play a key role in determining his guilt or innocence. We had no luck reaching Callaway or his attorney. The jury was selected today. The trial is set to begin tomorrow morning in Judge Mariani's courtroom. Reporting from the South Side, I'm Tamika Artis to Channel 11 News. And Pittsburgh police looking for a car that hit a woman in downtown overnight and kept on going. She was hit near the corner of 6th and Wood around 2. She did go to the hospital, but only as a precaution. The car described as a gold Nissan Altima with hood damage. And new details as the search continues for a carjacking suspect. Police say forensics experts are now looking at surveillance video from the Walmart parking lot in West Mifflin, where a woman was forced from her car on Sunday. They're also going over any new evidence in the car. The suspect ran away after crashing the car in Hayes. Police tell us today they aren't quite ready to show us the video in this case. The Westmoreland County man charged with killing three family members now says someone else pulled the trigger. 50-year-old Kevin Murphy is accused of killing his mother, sister, and aunt back in 2009. His trial set to begin in March. Their bodies were found inside Murphy's Glass Shop in Loyal Hanna Township. Murphy was arrested a year later. Prosecutors say Murphy killed the women because they were unhappy that Murphy was having an affair with a married woman. He faces the death penalty. Police say a Jeanette man arrested for public drunkenness over the weekend had a lot of fight left in him. Our partners at the Trib say that Scott Ballantyne fought with officers twice, once as he was being taken into police headquarters. And again, during processing, two officers suffered arm and hand injuries. They are expected to be okay. Ballantyne is due in court on Thursday. A Washington County mom's in trouble tonight, accused of using a child to help her in a shoplifting scheme. It all happened last Friday at the Family Dollar in Washington. According to a police report 43 year old Michelle Mellers was cited for theft after a worker at the store spotted her putting things into a bag and afterwards police say the woman handed the bag to her daughter who put everything in the mom's car. A well, police report said the woman and her daughter did this several times before they were stopped. The manager at the store did not go on camera but says that Mellers was verbally abusive and was yelling at her when police got there. An upcoming change of season means the return of an old foe. And coming up tonight, we've learned the struggle to keep stink bugs out could even be more difficult this year. I'm at City Police Headquarters where command staff are meeting right now to put a stop to the retaliation shootings terrorizing several Pittsburgh neighborhoods. A string of shootings in two neighborhoods. Tonight, Pittsburgh police scrambling to come up with a plan to stop that violence. The first shooting at a home on Rochelle Street in Knoxville. One thing may have led to another. Now police are investigating three shootings. Channel 11 News reporter Renee Kaminsky uncovers the possible connection between these crimes. 19-year-old Jason Daniel Jr. is the latest casualty in what some are calling a war zone. In the last 48 hours, bloody turf wars have played out in homes and streets of Belsuver and Knoxville, claiming two lives and wounding four. We were at Pittsburgh Police Headquarters today when command staff met to plan strategy to stop the violence, which began Sunday night in Knoxville. 19-year-old Antoine Leak was gunned down in the kitchen of this Rochelle Street home. Less than 24 hours later, about 6 o'clock Monday night, three young men are 
were hit with a volley of gunfire as they sat on a porch along Curtin Avenue in Beltsuver. All three will recover, but Jason Daniel Jr. of Knoxville wasn't as fortunate. Daniel was shot and killed just a half an hour later, less than a mile away as he sat behind the wheel of a car on Matthews Avenue in Knoxville. Investigators now believe the shootings are likely gang-related and motivated by revenge. It's a war zone. You kind of get used to it. I wanted to calm any concerns that they might have. We saw City Councilman Bruce Krause going door to door in the community today, so I asked him what city officials plan to do about the escalating violence. It's time to bring in the big guns. If, if we need to ask for help from the state or from the feds, then so be it. Let's put aside our pride and let's ask for that help. In the meantime, parents are trying to protect their children. What do you tell them about what's going on out here? You can't do anything. What can you do but pray and ask God to watch over them as they come and, and they go? Meantime, a man wanted in a shooting last week in Fineview is now in police custody. 37-year-old L.G. Wilson turned himself in to sheriff's deputies today. He is charged with attempted homicide after Friday's shooting. Police say he fired several shots at another man near Sandusky Court. A mother walking near a playground got caught in the crossfire and was critically injured. Clearing a path for film crews, the Batman movie shoots about to tie up some streets. Coming up, how the Cape Crusader could cause some confusion on local roads. You can definitely throw the windows open tonight. Nice cool night, but a bit of a warm-up on the way. We'll have details when we come back. A close call after a crash along the Parkway North. The impact nearly sent these two cars over the Jersey barrier in the outbound lanes near PNC Park overnight. Take a look at this. The crash actually knocked over a light pole. It fell and damaged a car in the Spring Hill Suites parking lot. No one in the cars or on the ground was hurt in that chain reaction accident. And two people are in the hospital after a chain reaction wreck in Greensburg. We're told a Chevy Cobalt slammed into a Toyota RAV4, the corner of Route 30 and Old Route 30, around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Then a Buick hit the Toyota. You can see the crews treating some of the victims for neck injuries, but no one appeared to be seriously hurt. Stink bugs on their way back, and experts say this year's infestation could be worse than last year's. As fall approaches, the stink bugs will start looking for warmer places. That means they could make their way into your home, even migrate south where they could damage crops. Government experts say stink bugs have started showing up as far south as North Carolina, and they say if they make any farther south than that, their population could explode. At Sorgles Farms in Wexford, they're using traps to keep those bugs from impacting their fruit. Farmers say stink bugs don't harm the fruit, but they say the insects make the fruit unsellable. The problem for us is instead of picking 100 fruit, we're going to pick 60 or 70 fruit. We're going to take the hit. Farmers also say it's sometimes hard to tell when the fruit has been damaged by those stink bugs. Police are looking for whomever broke into a Butler County food bank. They say someone broke through the side door of the Cabot food bank in Winfield Township last week and left with a turkey and a ham. We're told it'll cost about $100 to fix that damage. Still no word on what started a fire at an ice cream cone plant in Hermitage. Flames shut down the Joy Cone Company for six hours overnight. Officials say it began in a dust collector, which holds small scrap pieces. The damage didn't spread to the other parts of the factory, and no one was hurt. Chopper 11 over a river rescue on the Mon. You can see the small white boat stranded in the middle of the river this afternoon near Sandcastle. A few people were on board there, and we were overhead as the rescue boat hitched up the stranded boat and towed it to safety. Initial reports were that the boat stalled out and then sprung a leak. A pretty good looking day today, made it into the low 80s. Humidity not a factor. That's your latest forecast from Severe Weather Center 11. Thank you, Scott. As you know, potholes are pretty common on Pittsburgh roads, but with a little Hollywood magic, one is open up downtown that's a little different than all the rest, big enough to swallow a car. Excavators dug out this huge hole on Cherry Way downtown for the filming of The Dark Knight Rises, the Batman movie. Once the car is dropped into the hole, it will be blown up. This, of course, means Cherry Way is going to close to traffic. That's not the only downtown road that's scheduled to shut down, though. We've posted information to nearly half a dozen road closures on our website, WPXI.com. Penguins once again capping season ticket sales to up to more ticket options next season. The Pens are selling 15,000 season tickets. They've also added 300 seats to Consol Energy Center. That brings the new capacity to 18,387. They want to make it easier for groups, students, and youth hockey organizations 
organizations to get tickets. Thanks for watching the news and the weather here on PCNC tonight. Stay tuned. Sports right after the break.